Okay, time for problem two. So this problem is a review of our force, uh, force unit, but also involves a couple other uh, pieces uh, in our analysis here. So, a uh, very common problem. This is a problem that involves one object sitting on a table, another object hanging off a pulley. Um, and then another scenario where we're actually looking at, um, instead of having an object hang off the pulley, actually applying a force on that object in a similar way and seeing if there's a difference between the two scenarios. In both these cases, we're trying to find the acceleration. So let's start with just part A. I'll take you through my thinking, um, and hopefully that helps you. So part A, as you can see, I'm not going to draw your diagram. You have it in front of you. But you can see that the objects sitting on the table, the strings going over the pulley and then down, and then the force is being applied downward of 50 newtons. And so if we think about what's happening there, um, it's really smart, since we're analyzing a force scenario, to start with a force diagram. Even though they don't ask you for it explicitly in this part, um, I still want to set myself up to be able to analyze it in that way. So I'm going to do that by writing down my forces. I've got gravity, of course, going down, normal force going up. We have this force of tension that's being pulled to the right, and that's the 50 newtons that is pulled over the edge of the pulley. And then we have some frictional force here that goes backwards. Now, I have to think in this scenario, once I've drawn that, is this a balanced or unbalanced scenario? Because they're asking us for the acceleration, my gut is to say, well, probably going to be a scenario that's accelerating. Um, we don't want to assume that too much, so we're going to go ahead and say it's unbalanced until proven otherwise. Which means that we'll apply, in order to get to the acceleration, Newton's second law, or the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. Always a safe bet. You can't go wrong with applying that equation here. Um, the worst that would come out is that you find out the acceleration is zero, and then you found out it was a balanced um, scenario all along. I do want to note, though, here, we're only going to focus on the x direction since the acceleration is happening in the x direction. So this is actually the sum of the forces in x and the acceleration in x. So let's dive into it. If I look here, there are two different forces. That means on this side I have two forces. I have F sub t plus f sub f for friction equals max. However, the frictional force is going in the opposite direction, which I've defined as negative. So I'm going to make that subtract. And then I'm going to plug in what I know. So f sub t is 50 minus, now f f, they don't tell us the problem, but they do give us the information that the coefficient of static friction here is 0.2. And since I know what the equation is for the frictional force, I can actually plug that in here. If you'll recall, the equation for the frictional force is, I'll write that in a different color, off to the side, the frictional force equation is equal to mu, the coefficient of uh, friction, times the normal force. Um, and so that's what I'm going to apply here. Mu is 0.2. Normal force here is pretty easy to get to. It's a balanced scenario in the y direction. That means the normal force is equal to mg. m here is 10 kilograms, so m times g here will be 100. So go ahead and plug that in. Equals, and then I look at the mass of the object that I'm moving or that's accelerating here. This mass is always associated with what the object is that accelerates. Um, and so in this case, that would be 10 times a sub x. If you work all of this out, what you'll find a to come out to be, for this example, uh, this is 50, this is uh, 20, so 50 minus 20 is 30, divided by 10, this comes out to be 3 meters per second squared. So that's part A. Now part B leads you a little bit further to analyze the second scenario. It looks very similar, um, but our job is to figure out if there's anything different. And they have us do that by starting with the force diagram. So we've already done this one here, so I'll just repeat it. So F sub N uh, for normal force, MG down for the gravitational force, FT to the right for the tension force, and F sub F for the frictional force. Those are all the same for the 10 kilogram object. The 5 kilogram object, if I look at it, has two forces on it, F sub T going up, and then going down MG. Remembering that this MG is different than the other MG, I'm going to make a marking here and call this M1 and call this M2. That's going to help me keep those figures straight um, as I work with them. Um, if you had this diagram here, that'd give you full credit for that second part. And then the final part it just asks us to solve for the acceleration for um, this scenario now um, that it's a little different. Um, but thinking about 
still the 10 kilogram mass. So let's go ahead and do the same uh, application here. The sum of the forces in the x direction equals ma. And I have to be really disciplined in thought here as I go through this to make sure I get everything correct. What I'm going to do is think about the x direction here as it applies to this scenario. Um, since I have now two objects that are attached together, I have to actually think of them as one object. And think of that one object with all the forces that are happening on it in its x direction. The tricky part here is to remember that because this x direction encounters a pulley where the direction is really switched to go start going down, what I'm going to think about here is my x direction for this object's the same, but when it hits the pulley, it goes down when it encounters object 2. And so since in this one I called the left direction negative x, um, I'm going to apply that to my coordinate system here so that down on this object is now positive. That's because when these objects accelerate, I want their acceleration to be in the same direction, both in magnitude and direction, which means the sign has to also be the same. So what we're saying here is, if the 10 kilogram mass is going to accelerate to the uh, right, and we're calling that positive, the 5 kilogram mass going down has the same acceleration because they're attached, and it also has to be positive. That's why we're making this adjustment. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with some confusing signs down here that are not going to lead you to understanding the correct acceleration. So, take some time to understand that. We've worked with problems like this before. It's a good reminder to how um, to approach those kinds of problems. So, now that we have that, we'll work through it. So, if I look at this in the x direction, I have one, two, three, four different forces. So, I'm going to write and add together all those forces, paying attention to the signs. So, we'll just start over here with FF. So, FF was negative. So, negative FF. FT is positive, plus F sub T. Here, I have another FT, but it's going in the opposite direction. It's going in the negative direction. It's going to be minus FT. And then the gravitational force on the second object is going down in the positive direction, so that's M2G equals... Now, this is the crux of the problem, the hardest part. We have to think about here which mass is accelerating. Remember, all of this is attached together, which means that if 10 kilogram mass moves, the 5 kilogram mass moves also, and there's no separating the two, which means that in this mass, what I'm actually going to do is add together the two masses, M1 and M2, and then, of course, we'll solve for AX. So, that's how we get the full equation. Once we're here, we can see some things happen. The extension forces cancel with one another. The reason is we're attaching these two objects, treating them like one object. So the tension force becomes not important in us understanding how this object moves. And this simplifies a little bit. We get negative F sub F plus M2G equals M1 plus M2 AX. And then now we can plug in the numbers here. Um, F sub F um, might be hard for you to see down here, so I'm going to start to work up here a little bit. Uh, F sub F is the same as it was before, so I'm just going to go ahead and substitute. That's negative 20. reason it's the same before, just to be clear, is the normal force is the same on the 10 kilogram object, and that's the object experiencing the friction. Uh, plus M2G. Well, M2G is 5 times 10, which would be 50, equals, I add the masses together, 15 A sub X, and if you do the math, Excuse me. A sub x, uh, this will come out to be 30, divided by 15, you get 2 meters per second squared. So, that's the answer. Now, conceptually, does it make sense? Well, you might have thought that you should have got the same answer with both of these, because essentially what you have is uh, this mass here applying a tension force that's the same as the 50 newtons that's pulled on that object. Here's the problem, though. That is true. But, in this scenario, when you accelerate the 10 kilogram mass, you're also accelerating the 5 kilogram mass. Which means you're essentially applying the same amount of force to these objects to move them, but this one has more mass. And let's see if that makes sense. More mass would refer to, for the same force, a smaller acceleration. We get 2 meters per second squared here, um, as opposed to 3 meters per second squared there. So that does confirm with our intuition and confirms with, conceptually, what we think should happen. So. This is how you approach problem two. Coming next, problem three.